Hello, Market Insights watchers. Well, in Market Roundup, new CPI data is in. What does it show? And tech megatrends, what tech innovations, including blockchain technologies, are available for us today to help curb, of all things, auto insurance costs? And in Crypto Corner, Ian will share the latest on tokenization. And you're watching us on the Banny Hill YouTube channel. Please make sure to like and subscribe while you're here. So let's get to it. Hi, Ian. How are you today? I'm good, Amber. You know, I didn't know we were going to talk about auto insurance, but I just renewed my policy. And guess what? What? <laughs> it went up a lot. <laughs> I know it's the story of our lives for many people today. So I may yeah, have and actually, you know, so the CPI, which tracks it, I don't even remember we talked about uh, last month, CPI showed auto insurance up 22% year over year, yes. you know, it's like, and, and in Florida, especially it's very high. If you have, I don't have any teenage children, but apparently my friends that have, you know, kids that are driving just now, it comes out to like three, $400 a month for just the, to insure the kids anyway. Oh, that that's not good. But we're I'm hoping gonna... by the time my girls are old enough to drive, it would just mm -hmm. be self-driving cars and they would just not need to drive at all. So the insurance costs would be way down. So that, that would be ideal. Let's see mm -hmm. how that happens. I hope it does. They're yeah. not going to drive till the 30 anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, everyone. So in market roundup on Wednesday, as Ian was mentioning, April's uh, U.S. inflation data for April showed inflation cooled for the first time in six months. Uh, softer inflation could increase the odds, and I say could, uh, for the Fed interest rate cut, but more data, of course, on inflation monitoring is needed uh, to make that determination. Now, the core consumer price index, which excludes food and energy costs, uh, climbed 0.3% from March. It really uh, broke a, a ongoing streak of, of three above um, about, about of three above forecast readings. Now, year over year, the measure ebbed to the slowest pace in three years. A broader CPI month over month climbed 0.3%, while CPI year over year climbed 3.4% from a year ago. A shelter and gas comprise over 70% of the increase, while, while well, we just discussed this, services like car insurance also attributed to the increased prices. In fact, as the cost of um, insurance is up 22.6% during the past year, and according to Bankrate, over the last four years, car insurance has skyrocketed 57% to an average annual premium of nearly $2,300. So Ian, uh, this had me thinking. I was thinking, what tech innovations, including blockchain technologies, are available to us today that could really help curb auto insurance costs. So I'll cover that topic in our tech megatrends uh, segment today uh, in mm -hmm. just a bit. Now, regarding this inflation data, I'd just like to know what are your thoughts? So we're seeing some cooling here, but there's still some hot spots here and there. Yeah, well, first things first, when we say inflation is slowing, we say the rate of inflation is slowing. So it doesn't necessarily mean that prices are going down. They're just not going up as fast as they were a couple of years ago. Remember the summer of 2022 when we had that CPI reading at 9% and everybody was worried back then that we would start getting double digit inflation readings. And you and I discussed that this is likely the, the peak of it, especially because the Fed was raising rates and slowing down the economy at the time. Um, and, and, and so, you know, obviously prices have gone up significantly over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're not going up as fast. And this is kind of a double-edged sword because if you think about the consumer price index, when prices go up, it means that businesses are charging more, people are paying more. And if you don't have an associated rise in the PPI in input costs for producers, it means that profit margins are going up. And what we've seen over the last couple of years, the stock market is up a lot, even though inflation is up. And that's because businesses have wider profit margins because inflation is going up and they're charging you more for things. It's as simple as that. So, you know, we want inflation to slow down. We don't want to have what's called deflation, which means the rate of prices goes down because that's what led to the Great Depression when asset prices uh, actually start contracting. You know, you don't want you, you want homes to be more affordable, but you don't want a 10 or 20 percent uh, haircut on the price or the value of your own home. Mm -hmm. That would be a big negative. Um, so, you know, I think that the, the that inflation, the CPI could be better 
from the Fed's perspective, I know they wanted to get it to like a two handle, but at least we continue to head in the right direction. And, you know, the, the CPI is also kind of a backward looking indicator, which means it takes about six months for the it to really filter in after the job slow. We're seeing job slow right now. Uh, we had that unemployment report, which was much weaker than expected on the first Friday of May. And I think that overall, we're going to start to see prices start to tend lower uh, because the economy is slowing down. It's just it, it, it just takes a little bit more time for the prices to come down. So on that note, I wanted to share also something that Carl Quintanilla from CNBC tweeted about some Bank of America research um, where he says the soft Bank of America is out saying the soft landing scenario is unfolding, something we've been talking about. And they say we think a 10 year yield decline from 435 to 325 in the next six to 12 months is a good possibility and likely non-consensus. So there's a couple of things that um, are happening here with that. Number one, it's going to make houses a lot more affordable for people. And it also going to make the, and also autos as well, because auto loans rotate off that tenure yield. Um, and so, you know, that would mean that the price of those goods would actually, or what people pay on a monthly basis would come down, which would actually bring the CPI down even lower. There's also people out there saying, and I saw this from Rick Reeder, who's a, a huge fund manager at BlackRock this morning, saying that the Fed wants to uh, stop inflation. It just needs to cut rates, right? Mm -hmm. Because then your the mortgage rates wouldn't be so high. Credit card rates wouldn't be so high. Auto financing rates wouldn't be so high. And it sounds so counterintuitive, right? Because usually when the Fed cuts rates, inflation accelerates because the economy grows. But in this case, it's like the economy is already growing. We're not having runaway inflation. If they cut rates, the cost of purchasing things would actually come down, and you know that might actually work. I don't think the Fed's going to do it, but it's really interesting that there are some ideas floating out out there. The Fed should cut rates to slow down inflation. Maybe they do come around to that uh, at some point. But you know, if you look at Fed fund futures, it's not in the cards right now. Not currently. But while we wait on that to manifest. I have an idea to present for everyone in tech megatrends today, which really is close to home in our pocketbooks. So as mentioned earlier, the cost of auto insurance is a contributing factor to elevated U.S. inflation data. Now today, uh, thanks to tech innovations, as well as blockchain advancements, uh, there are some solutions to help mitigate these costs in a personal budget. And Ian, I think you're already familiar with this crypto-based innovation. You've mentioned it. I know it. where you're going with this. <laughs> so I'll highlight it now. And that <laughs> is Dem Demo. So Demo is the native blockchain-based token of the Demo protocol. Uh, think of it like an airline reward point system for your car. So like an airline miles for your car, quote, uh, connect to Demo and users start earning weekly rewards. Uh, Demo makes every compatible car on earth smart as well as programmable. Uh, their motto is car companies use your data and you should too. Now it's an open platform built to connect every compatible uh, car on the planet and modernize the entire transportation industry. So at the protocol level, uh, Demo uses the Ethereum virtual machine, AKA blockchain, uh, cryptography, open source software, as well as hardware to establish vehicle identity, uh, permissions to access data and, con and controls, rewards, and so much more. So where auto insurance savings is concerned, in October 2023, Ian, a demo announced its partnership with Marble Insurance. I don't know if you've heard of Marble Insurance. Hmm. Yeah, I'm familiar with them. Okay, cool. So Marble Insurance, but this collaboration, this collab, enables demo users to leverage their vehicle data uh, to receive personalized data-driven insurance policies. And it's just really overall significant cost savings. And once users are signed up with Marble, uh, their policy will continue to be monitored for savings uh, and savings opportunities. And Marble's tech uh, automatically shops around for the best price without uh, compromising the actual quality of coverage that the user has. So it's really demo plus Marble can equal lower insurance premiums. And so far about $5 million in rewards in general with the demo has been earned by drivers using this uh, protocol. And demo is compatible with any car that's a 2008 or newer, uh, brands like BM BMW, I say Beamer by accident, but BMW, Tesla, Ford, Jeep, Honda, Toyota, Chevy, as well as Audi are compatible with Demo. And users can connect via their car's app 
or use a physical demo device, um, you can see those on screen. I'm going to put those two up for you. So once connected, in addition to auto insurance savings, well, the average demo driver earns around $1,250 in annual savings, as well as rewards. So far, over 85,000 cars are connected to demo and have traveled more than 424 million miles and counting and quoting. They're at 85,000 cars now, huh? Yeah, that's what they, their website is touting. So I thought that was- You know, so, so thank you for sharing that. And oh. subscribers and viewers of this channel, should be familiar with this company. This is something that we outlined uh, about a year ago and also brought to the attention of our crypto readers. Mm -hmm. You know, Amber, um, uh, we we told, uh, so this is, Demo fits into this category of decentralized physical infrastructure networks, or the acronym is DPIN, D-E-P-I-N. And it was something, uh, the, the, the first uh, DPIN protocol in crypto that really made a big splash was Helium. And that was the little box that lets you earn helium tokens for creating a a local Wi-Fi network mm -hmm. in your in your area. Um, you know, I, I've been I've got demo uh, in both of my cars. I earn about let's say eighty dollars a month, depending on the token price. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not it's not a huge money maker like helium was at the time. I remember back in the day, some people were earning like thousands of dollars a day on helium but it's nice to offset your insurance costs just by plugging something in your car now the worries people have is like who's going to take my data who's going to steal it well it's actually um a, a pseudonymous where it's like when it goes on the blockchain they don't know who actually owns the car uh if anybody's looking at the data they can just see the data that's happening in, in your car um, and I recommend everyone uh, purchase one of these. I think they're like $150. And after about a month, you know, your costs will be offset by plugging them into your car. Um, and then lastly, I also want to note too, is that uh, Bill Ackman is an investor in Demo. Um, he actually got in after we alerted everyone about this protocol. So um, it, it, of course, he's like a, you know, big, big person in, in, in finance who's pretty well known for calling the uh, financial crisis back in 2008. So yeah, thank you for sharing that, Amber. And uh, cool. Yeah, I thought it was so cool. So I just want to end with like blockchain technology innovations like Demo is mm -hmm. where we're headed, right, Ian? And that's why if you haven't done so already, everyone listening to us today, uh, please check out Ian's Next Wave Crypto Fortunes uh, trading service. He actually uncovers cryptos like open source protocols, uh, which like Demo is based upon to invest in today. Uh, now here's a sneak peek of open positions in the next wave crypto fortunes uh, model portfolio right now. Uh, subscribers are enjoying open gains of as much as 9,891%. So you want to click the bull icon at the top of our screen over here or to email accompanying this video to learn more about how to get started with next wave crypto fortunes. Awesome. Thanks, Amber. And also, you know, for those of you that haven't gotten into crypto yet, mm -hmm. we are in the middle of a bull cycle and we've had a pretty nice pullback in that cycle. And to me, that is always the time to get in after you've had a big run up and then a pullback mm -hmm. uh, to get ready for the next launch higher because there are ideas like Demo and Helium and Dpin, and there's also a lot going on in the uh, real world assets tokenized sector as well that I'm, I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. Totally excited. Okay, Ian, so what's happening with tokenization and crypto corner for today? Speaking of real world asset tokenization. So um, Amber, I've been in finance now for just about 30 years and you know, some things have changed in finance and other things that haven't. One thing that's changed is the technology that we use uh, to transact with, you know, I'm talking about your laptop has changed, your PC has changed, you can now do trades on the phone. But the problem in, in finance is that the underlying plumbing under all this is still the same that it's been for, let's say, 70 years. Mm -hmm. And it's very archaic, these, these so-called settlement and clearinghouse systems, um, which means that if you go into, let's say, your Schwab account and you want to go buy some stock, you know, the, the Schwab has to move that money uh, into a clearinghouse and then they have to match that with the stock that you want to buy. And this thing, it doesn't happen instantaneously. It looks like it happens instantaneously in your account, but mm. the, because the broker can basically create this mirage that it is, but it takes T plus two days, which means it can take a couple of days. And we had an issue with this just a couple of years ago. I don't remember... Remember the last GameStop mania? Not the most recent one, mm -hmm. Amber. Remember the last one that happened in 2021? Oh, yes. Very much Do you so. Remember when Robinhood basically like stopped 
people from trading. They said, mm. you can't trade GameStop anymore. You can't trade anything. Mm. It basically froze people's accounts, mm -hmm. even though they were up a lot of money. Right. I the reason why this happened is because people who had GameStop in Robinhood sold after huge gains, mm -hmm. but because of T plus two settlement, the mm. cash had not come back in yet. So the broker would didn't have the cash to allow people to go and make new trades. Okay. Mm. That's because of this extended settlement. Now, the promise of blockchain, number one, is to have instantaneous settlement. Now, Bitcoin isn't necessarily instantaneous. It, it, in order for a Bitcoin transaction to settle, it takes about five to 10 minutes for a new block to be created. Mm. Solana is instantaneous. Ethereum is moving towards instantaneous transactions, which is why a lot of these decentralized finance protocols are built on top of Ethereum and Solana. Uh, also because they're composable tokens. Now, where I'm going with this is yesterday, there was an announcement, first of all, uh, before I share this news, uh, we all know that Jamie Dimon like, hates crypto, right? Jamie Dimon, he's the CEO of JP Morgan. He called Bitcoin a scam and a fraud. Um, you know, he's, He said crypto, if, he, if any of his traders trade crypto, he'll fire them. Um, meanwhile, JP Morgan has been trying to figure out how they can uh, take advantage of blockchain and crypto technology. Uh, most recently yesterday, JP Morgan announced that they tokenized, they did a tokenization pilot with JP Morgan or with BNY Mellon mm -hmm. and Chainlink, which is a crypto asset that we have in our strategic fortunes portfolio. And, and basically... Uh, they figured out a way to tokenize an asset so that when the asset is transacted, it can be settled instantaneously and you don't have to wait T plus two days. So these banks are going to use crypto to essentially reinvent the plumbing of the financial system, which is something that I've been predicting for a while. And to get there, though, real world assets, the things that we own in our stock accounts, even you know maybe the house that you own, uh, will need to be tokenized. There will need to be some type of blockchain-based token that represents this asset if you want to transact them on a blockchain, right? Mm -hmm. You can't take your existing Tesla or Apple stock and settle it on a blockchain unless it's a token that can be used on a blockchain. So mm -hmm. there are a number of companies right now, a number of well, crypto protocols that are starting this process of uh, tokenizing all real world assets. And I think, what is there, $150 trillion worth of real world assets that need to be tokenized? Uh, that is coming. Uh, we've been talking about this now probably over six or seven years, but the banks are actually uh, pushing this forward right now, which I believe will make this accelerate and happen a lot faster that, than people predict it will happen. Um, for the number one reason is that it just makes uh, trading and settlement so much easier. The second reason why the markets and capitalism are going to love this is it makes everything permissionless, which means that our world is global right now. And if someone in, in Asia wants to invest in the U.S. markets, very difficult for them. Blockchain is going to basically democratize all finance, which will allow capital to flow to the most optimal investments that and, and without having borders or boundaries. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very difficult for an American to go invest in Central America. Mm. Blockchain is going to make, and tokenization is going to make it a lot easier to invest in any project uh, around the world instantaneously. Mm. And uh, to me, it is the next evolution of capitalism. And, you know, whenever there are these big uh, sort of revolutionary changes in the foundation of how we form capital, mm. it always leads to higher than expected economic growth. And, and so this is why I'm really excited about tokenizing real world assets. And like I said, there's a number of protocols that we have uh, invested in in the next wave crypto service that please check out if you haven't yet. Oh, yeah. And also the one that I'm talking about yesterday went up like 20% on this news because everyone knows that they're kind of the key uh, outside of Chainlink. There's another one I don't want to mention on this because I don't want to. <laughs> No, uh, I don't want I don't want to ruin it for subscribers. <laughs> OK, so that's it for this week, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, if you have a question about anything crypto related or stock related for the market, so please email us at Market Insights at BanyanHill.com. Yep. And if we read your question, we're going to send you a Banyan Hill thermal mug, right, Amber? A thermal yeah, mug? That's what can, it is. We can make that happen. Exactly. All right, we'll make that happen. <laughs> Looking forward to it.
All right. Thanks, Amber. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We will see you next week. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.